Welcome back to The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes. It is the weekend, which means it's time for a segment that I do called The Week in Pictures, which is a collection of photojournalism taken from around the world in the last week. Before I get into this, though, I want to address a question that I had in the comments this week, and someone had asked, what is the difference between photojournalism and street photography? And I can understand that there might be some confusion there because the two dovetail somewhat. One is a genre, and the other really refers to a vocation. So, for instance, street photography is a genre of photography. Some would argue that goes back clear to the roots of photography, but really came became prominent, I would say, probably about the 1920s and moving forward. And photojournalism is a style of photography for the, where the photographer maintains a level of transparency between them and the subject. So nothing is set up. And unlike the name implies street photography, it's not just pictures taken on the street. It's images made in public that the aim is to document the human condition. And I think that's a very interesting description, and there's a wide range of emotions that can come from that, but the photographer's role is not to set anything up. It's not like portraiture or still life where you're gonna control lighting or anything like that. It's simply a matter of documenting an event as it unfolds. And it's become an entire genre of photography. Now, photojournalism, on the other hand, is more of, it's more descriptive of a vocation. So somebody who is a photojournalist is typically somebody who shoots photography for the news cycle. So this could be, events that are either historic in scope or possibly historic in scope. Um, it could be really anything related to the news that is in the moment of where we are now. And it's usually a very specific purpose and use that comes out of that. So certainly it employs elements of street photography in what it does. I think it goes somewhat outside of that and this is where it starts to become debatable and that's probably a bigger topic for another time. But you can say that one is a street photographer but that does not necessarily mean that they are a photojournalist. Photojournalism is a vocation that one can do that is very connected with the world of street photography. Both are held to a very high ethical standard in terms of the truthfulness that is portrayed in photography. And I think there's some subtle differences too. I mean, photojournalism provides a level of access to events and people that you're not going to find necessarily in street photography, but may not be really a part of street photography. So anyway, it's very difficult because there are a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. Now, in this show that I do once a week with The Weekend Pictures, I focus predominantly on photojournalism. In fact, it is strictly photojournalism. All the images that I use here are have been distributed through news agencies, and that's why I give those in the credits to say where they came from and who the photographer was. So this is a very different scope, and it is more of a news type of situation. So anyway, having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at the week in pictures. This week, people in Brooklyn cooled off at McCarran Park. Swimming pool attendance climbed to 150,149 last year from a little over 129,000 in 2014. Public use of the city's public parks, pools, and beaches is rising significantly. Two young girls pose for a picture as part of a Palestinian wedding party on Saturday. Weddings have become a welcome celebration that provides a break from the dark and violent mood commonly associated with the Gaza Strip. The same evening in France, a Muslim woman is one of many in attendance to a mass in tribute to Jacques Hamel at the Rouen Cathedral. The 85-year-old priest was murdered in a Catholic church by two Islamic radicals last month. South African voters wait at a polling station in Durban on Wednesday. Closely contested elections that pose a threat to the African National Congress are underway. Voters are also seen here near Johannesburg, and a handicapped woman casts her vote at a polling station in Soweto. India experienced flooding Friday in Mumbai. A man here walks by a stranded public transport vehicle. Earlier this week, Yemen experienced flooding as well, as children ride in a car trunk on a flooded street in Sana'a. The same day, high waters were seen in the Philippines, brought by Typhoon Nita. A Filipino man is removing trash brought by the strong waves. Forest fires burned uncontrollably in Las Manchas on the southwestern part of La Palma Island. La Palma is a Spanish territory that sits west of Africa. Island fires also burned on the island of Evia, about 100 miles north of Athens in the village of Limni. The forest fire raged for days as local residents are seen here attempting to save Galataka Monastery. The monastery was founded in the 10th century by a shipwrecked seaman. Anti-narcotics police burned a cocaine lab found in a rural area of Calamar belonging to criminal gangs. The operation was a five-day crackdown destroying 104 labs in the area capable of producing 100 tons of the drug annually. The labs were all burned down by police commandos. About 11 a.m. on Thursday, a fire broke out at a shopping mall in Kabul. 
Over a thousand shops operate out of the center, mostly clothing stores. The fire took over four hours to extinguish to the estimated loss of about $5 million U.S. in inventory. Despite the raging fire, shop owners could be seen running in and out of the building trying to save goods. On the outskirts of Kabul, an officer stands guard at a road leading to the guest house in a compound attacked earlier by the Taliban. Foreign contractors are reportedly staying at the compound. In Jalalabad, 150 kilometers from Kabul, an Afghan laborer looks on as he works in a traditional cotton factory. In Cologne, Germany, a woman wearing a headscarf of the Turkish flag is one of tens of thousands of protesters gathered ahead of a pro-government rally to denounce the failed coup attempt in Turkey last month. Germany is home to roughly three million people with Turkish roots. A man's shadow is seen behind a flag in Istanbul's Taksim Square. Dozens of staff at Turkey's highest court have been suspended as part of the crackdown. A Turkish girl is seen under a huge picture of modern Turkey's founder, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, at a rally in Izmir. Outside Moscow, a tank's barrel is seen participating in the tank biathlon competition during the International Army Games. 22 countries participate in a series of games as the military version of the Olympics. The two-week event consists of 23 events ranging from air, marine, and field operations. Brazilian surfer Rico de Souza carries the Olympic torch as he surfs in Rio de Janeiro, and former Brazilian volleyball player Isabel Barroso holds the torch next to Christ the Redeemer statue, kicking off the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. Despite the problems of crime, pollution, and other issues surrounding the host city, we are sure to see a breadth of amazing photography around the Games. Divers are seen plunging and practicing from the 10-meter platform at the Maria Lenk Aquatic Center on Monday. Outside the lens and glamour of the Olympic Games, demonstrators block a road in protest against the Olympic torch relay, upset with Brazil's financial commitment to the Olympics over education. Half a world away from the Olympics, Syrian rebels blow up a tunnel on Wednesday, trapping about 300,000 people in eastern Aleppo, which has been held by rebels since 2012 and is cut off by a government siege blocking supply routes. Damascus is sending seven Syrians to the Rio Olympics, but war means that many athletes are left behind in rebel-held areas. This is Syrian gymnast Ahmad al-Sawas, seen practicing in Aleppo last March. Ahmad was the last national champion before the fighting began, and he knew that supporting the anti-government side would prevent him from being selected. In his words, I chose to be an athlete who participates in the revolution. He trains where he can for about two hours a day with makeshift equipment. The 19-year-old athlete makes a living selling and repairing electronic equipment in his father's shop. The Syrian committee in Damascus has ruled out the inclusion of athletes in rebel-held areas. Many non-Olympic-related photographs of athletic prowess were also seen this week. Israeli Arab boys are seen jumping from the ancient wall of Acre into the Mediterranean Sea on Tuesday. In Poland, participants perform on lines stretched across buildings during the 8th Urban Highline Festival, one of the biggest highline festivals in the world. Near Kosovo, one of 27 divers compete from the 22-meter high bridge during an annual high diving competition. Divers leap from the Ura Bridge every year. On Wednesday, stars filled the sky over the summit of a mountain in Switzerland. And on Thursday, a man takes a fishing boat into a lake in the Hubei province in China. So this wraps up our segment for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please leave a comment if you have input on this. This is a newer show that I'm doing. I'm doing these once a week. I will link up to a playlist here if you were interested in seeing some of the other segments that I've done. And I'm kind of constantly trying to improve this. So any input that you want to share is certainly welcome. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the videos that I do here. And until the next one, I'll see you guys then. Later.